Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are going to talk about uh, novel coronavirus, the new hot topic on uh, on the on medicine all over the world. Uh, 2019 novel coronavirus. Uh, we will uh, take uh, an overview about epidemiology and uh, clinical presentation, prevention, and treatment. Uh, at the end of uh, December 2019, uh, the Chinese authority uh, informed uh, WHO about the diagnosis of new cases of pneumonia with unknown etiology. Uh, this uh, kind of pneumonias, uh, it was found uh, that it is related to the exposure uh, on seafood market in uh, Wuhan city in China. Uh, on, on the 7th of January to, uh, 2020, uh, the Chinese authority identified a new type of coronavirus that is responsible for this kind of pneumonia. Uh, what are the coronavirus? Coronavirus are a group of uh, viruses uh, that usually uh, infect animals, but under uh, uh, some circumstances, uh, the virus can be transmitted to humans and cause a serious complication. Uh, like SARS and uh, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and the newly diagnosed uh, novel coronavirus. Uh, then the newly diagnosed novel coronavirus, uh, the main source of the infection or main source, source of the virus uh, still not identified. The situation in uh, numbers uh, that was uh, issued on uh, 2nd of February uh, to, uh, 2020, uh, about uh, uh, 14,500 confirmed cases, most of them in China, mortality about uh, 300 deaths. Uh, and uh, outside China, it, uh, there is about uh, 150 confirmed cases with one death. Uh, case definitions uh, for surveillance, uh, the WHO uh, put uh, some criteria to uh, define the suspect case and the uh, probable case and the confirmed case of uh, novel coronavirus. Uh, initially, we are going to talk about SARI. SARI is severe acute respiratory illness. Uh, that means a patient with cough and fever for the last uh, 10 days, and this patient uh, requires hospitalization. Now, the suspect case of uh, novel coronavirus. Uh, the first uh, category is SARI patient with uh, no other uh, etiology uh, that explained the presentation and the uh, history of travel of Wuhan city in China uh, in the 14 days prior the symptoms onset or a SARI patient with uh, which is a healthcare worker uh, in, uh, an, in an environment that uh, SARI of unknown etiology are being cared of. The second category, beta category, patient with any acute respiratory, respiratory illness and at least one of the following. Close contact with the confirmed or probable case of novel coronavirus in the last 14 days or visiting uh, live animal market, markets in Wuhan in the last 14 days, or uh, working or attending healthcare facility uh, in the last 14 days uh, prior to the onset of the symptoms. Uh, this uh, uh, the facility must be with the 
cases with the novel coronavirus. The probable case of uh, novel coronavirus, a suspect case for whom testing for novel corona coronavirus is inconclusive, or for whom testing was positive on a pan coronavirus assay. This is the definition of prob probable case of coronavirus. Confirmed case, a person with laboratory confirmation of 2019 novel coronavirus infection, uh, regardless of the clinical presentation. The clinical uh, syndromes uh, of uh, novel coronavirus, it can come with uh, different uh, clinical pictures, starting from uh, simple upper respiratory tract infection till uh, respiratory failure and uh, septic shock and death. The first uh, presentation or first uh, clinical sy syndrome, uncomplicated illness, patient with uncomplicated upper respiratory tract viral infection, may, uh, may have non-specific symptoms such as fever, cough, sore throat, or nasal congestion, headaches, uh, muscle pain, or malaise, no signs of uh, dehydration, sepsis, or shortness, shortness of breath. Mild pneumonia, the second presentation, mild pneumonia, patient with pneumonia without signs of severity. Uh, for the chi uh, children, a uh, child with non-severe pneumonia uh, has cough or difficulty in breathing, uh, plus fast breathing according to the age. Severe pneumonia, uh, adolescent or adult, the definition of severe pneumonia in adolescent or adult, uh, fever or suspected respiratory infection plus one of the following, respiratory rate more than 30, severe respiratory distress or desaturation less than 90. For the child, cough or difficulty in breathing plus at least one of the following, central cyanosis, desaturation, severe respiratory distress, uh, signs of uh, pneumonia with the general danger, uh, general danger signs, uh, uh, like inability to breastfeed or drink, or uh, unconsciousness or convulsions. The diagnosis of uh, severe pneumonia must be clinical and the imaging help exclude the complications. The uh, other presentation of the novel coronavirus is uh, ERDS. ERDS uh, in definition, there must be acute onset within one week of uh, respiratory symptoms, uh, unexplained chest imaging, so no uh, fusions, no lobar or lung collapse, no nodules, and the exclusion of pulmonary edema, cardiogenic pulmonary edema, with cardiac study uh, such as echocardiography. And the other criteria is uh, oxygenation, the, there must be a, a desaturation with the patient. In my DRDS, it will be PO2 on FiO2, it will be between 200 and 300, either patient ventilated or non ventilated. In moderate ARDS, it will be between 100 and 200. In severe ARDS, it will be less than 100. If uh, there is no uh, uh, arterial blood gases machine in the hospital, we can uh, calculate uh, SpO2 over FiO2. It will be uh, less than 315. It will suggest ARDS. In children, uh, a patient on bi-level non-invasive ventilation or CPAP, via full face mask. And the PO2 on FiO2 less than 300 or SpO2 on FiO2 less than 200, 264. Mild ARDS in uh, ventilated patient, invasively ventilated patient, 
uh, oxygenation index will be between four and eight, or uh, oxygenation index using SpO2 it will be seven, less than between five and uh, seven point five. In moderate oxygenation index between eight and sixteen, or uh, OSI between uh, seven point five uh, to twelve point three. In severe ARDS, uh, oxygenation index will be uh, more than uh, 16 or OSI more than 12.3. The other presentation of uh, novel coronavirus, it will be sepsis, uh, means adult uh, with uh, uh, organ dysfunction, such as uh, altered mental status, difficult or fast breathing, low saturation, reduced urine output, fast heart rate, uh, weak pulse, cold extremities, or low blood pressure, skin modeling, laboratory findings such as uh, coagulopathy, thrombocytopenia, acidosis, high lactate, or high hyperpilopinemia. In children, suspected or proven infection plus uh, uh, two two or more uh, criteria of SIRS, of which one must be abnormal temperature or white blood cells count. The other pre presentation will be septic shock. That patient presenting with high potential uh, despite volume resuscitation requiring vasopressors to maintain mean arterial blood pressure more than 65 and serum lactate more than two. This is an adult and children, any hypotension uh, with two or three of the following uh, altered mental status, tachycardia or bradycardia, prolonged capillary refill, warm uh, vasodilation with pounding bulbs, tachypnea, motile skin, uh, porphyritic rash, increased lactate, uh, oliguria, hyperthermia or hypothermia. The most important uh, uh, step in the management of novel coronavirus is prevention. Infection prevention and control measures. These are the uh, infection control measures for all the population. Everybody must be, uh, must care of uh, hand hygiene, uh, covering mouth and, uh, and nose uh, while sneezing or coughing. Avoid the close contact with anyone with uh, flu symptoms. Uh, good cooking of meat and eggs. Avoid unprotected uh, contact with the uh, live animals. This is a uh, hand hygiene steps. Uh, every uh, uh, health care worker must, must do uh, with every contact with the patient. Uh, first step before touching the patient, uh, before any procedure, clean or aseptic procedure, after body fluid exposure risk, after touching the patient, after touching the patient surrounding. The triage of suspected cases uh, of novel coronavirus, every suspected patient must be given a medical mask and must be uh, directed to separate area uh, or isolation room if, uh, if available. Uh, the, we, we should keep one meter distance between the patient and uh, the other patients. We should uh, instruct the patient to cover his nose and mouth during coughing or sneezing with a tissue or flexed elbow. Uh, we should perform hand hygiene after any a contact with the respiratory secretions. Then every uh, patient uh, with a, a novel a suspected case of novel coronavirus, we should do a droplet and contact precautions. Droplet and contact precautions. Droplet precautions, first of all, medical mask, if the healthcare staff is working within one or two meters uh, of the patient, uh, single room, we should try to keep the patient in single room or if uh, that one uh, 
is not possible, we can keep the patient with uh, similar diagnosis or symptoms in the same room. We should protect the eye by uh, eye protective me uh, measures, such as uh, face shield or goggles. Uh, we should limit uh, patient movement and ensure that the patient wear medical mask if he went outside his room. Contact precautions, uh, we should use uh, personal protective equipment, uh, which is a medical mask, uh, eye protection, gloves, and gowns. When entering room and remove PPE when leaving. Uh, disposable equipment such, such as uh, stethoscopes, uh, blood pressure cuffs, and thermometers must be used. If it is not possible, we should clean, we should we should clean uh, the uh, equipment uh, with every use of any patient, between each patient use. We should uh, make sure that the healthcare workers refrain from touching their eyes and nose and mouth uh, with potential con contaminated gloves or hands. Avoid uh, contaminating uh, environment such as uh, door hand handles and light switches. Ensure adequate uh, room ventilation uh, and uh, avoid movement of the patient or transport uh, as much as we can and perform hand hygiene. These are the PPEs. Uh, it's uh, eye protection, mask, gown, and gloves. Uh, airborne precautions must be taken in uh, special circumstances not in all suspected patients. Uh, if the healthcare worker is performing a aerosol generating procedure, such as suctioning of uh, the respiratory tract, intubation, uh, bronchoscopy, or cardiopulmonary resuscitation, he should use PPE, including gloves, uh, long sleeves, gowns, and eye protection, plus fit tested uh, particular uh, respirator such as N95 mask and uh, negative pressure room for the patient if possible. Now uh, regarding the treatment, unfortunately uh, there is no specific treatment for novel coronavirus so far. So the management and treatment for the patient will be supportive treatment. Early supportive treatment for the patient. First of all, uh, supplemental oxygen. Uh, every patient with uh, SARI and respiratory distress or hypoxemia or shock. Uh, for adult, the target uh, oxygen saturation will be 90 or more. If uh, if a pregnant lady will be between 92 and 95, full children will be more than 90 also. Uh, if emergency signs, it will be more than 94. Fluid management, we should uh, follow uh, conservative fluid management measures to avoid the uh, overload uh, of the patient. For antimicrobial treatment, we should start uh, empiric antimicrobial treatment uh, within uh, one hour of identifying sepsis. Uh, the antimicrobial treatment will be according to the clinical diagnosis. It's, uh, if it is a community acquired pneumonia or healthcare associated pneumonia or sepsis. Empiric treatment should uh, include uh, Oseltamivir, such as uh, which, which is known as Tamiflu, for treatment of influenza. Uh, although it's uh, not affecting the coronavirus, but uh, uh, we should cover empirically uh, the influenza virus, uh, which is more common than uh, coronavirus. Uh, we should de-escalate the treatment uh, upon microbial uh, results and the clinical ju judgment. 
for systemic steroids it's not recommended to use uh, systemic steroid uh, in uh, viral pneumonia or ARDS there is no benefit in this and there is a possible harm we should uh, closely monitor the patient uh, uh, with SARI and signs of clinical for signs of clinical deterioration for respiratory failure and sepsis we should uh, identify the comorbid uh, condition and um, manage accordingly and communicate early with the family and the patient. Collection of specimen for laboratory diagnosis. Every patient uh, with the signs of sepsis, we should collect blood culture for him before starting antibiotics for the patient. But we should not delay the starting of antimicrobial agent uh, if uh, blood culture will be delayed. We should start uh, antibiotic as soon as possible. For uh, testing uh, for novel coronavirus uh, PCR, we should collect uh, both upper and lower respiratory tract uh, samples, and uh, some clinician uh, can. Uh, elect to collect only lower respiratory tract sample in uh, some cases such as intubated patients but uh, it's better to collect both upper and lower respiratory tract samples for pcr serology uh, is only recommended if the pcr is not available uh, the medical staff who will uh, do the collection must wear PPE and uh, take contact and droplet precautions if uh, the sample from upper airways and airborne precautions if the sample from lower airways. Uh, both samples must be sent for influenza A or P. If uh, the case was confirmed with uh, novel coronavirus, uh, we should uh, uh, repeat the test of PCR to ensure viral clearance. At least uh, every two to four days until, conserve, uh, until two consecutive uh, negative results in a uh, clinically recovered patient, at least 24 hours apart. Management of uh, respiratory failure and the ARDS. We should uh, recognize a uh, hypoxemic patient, hypoxemic respiratory failure uh, as soon as possible. Uh, the use of uh, high flow nasal cannula or non invasive ventilation is not recommended as a routine in, uh, in the, the case of uh, respiratory failure because of novel coronavirus because there is risk of treatment failure. Uh, endotracheal intubation should be performed by trained and experienced pro uh, provider using airborne precautions. Uh, in, in, clinic, in a mechanically ventilated patient, we should use lower tidal volumes. And if the patient with the RDS, we should use a high PEEP for the patient like any case for ARDS. Uh, prone position uh, ventilation is recommended at least uh, for 12 hours per day. Conservative uh, fluid management, as we mentioned before. Uh, neuromuscular blocking agents uh, is not recommended as a routine. We should uh, use sedation if no uh, no indication for uh, neuromuscular agent. For a patient with uh, refractory hypoxemia, we can use extracorporeal life support uh, if the patient failed to respond to mechanical ventilation. Management of uh, septic shock. Uh, we should suspect uh, septic shock in adult if the patient has infection 
and uh, the need of vasopressors to maintain main arterial blood pressure more than 65 and if lactate is more than 2 millimole per liter in the absence of hypovolemia. Septic shock in children, hypotension with uh, two or three of the following, uh, altered mental state, tachycardia or bradycardia, uh, prolonged uh, capillary refill, uh, warm uh, vasodilation, tachypnea, motile skin, barbaric rash, increased lactate, oligoyuria, hyperthermia, or hypothermia. Fluid uh, resuscitation in adult, we should give at least 30 ml per kg of isotonic uh, crystalloid, such as normasaline in, in adult, uh, in the first three hours. Uh, for children, we should give uh, 20 ml per kg as rapid bolus and up to 40 to 60 ml per kg in the first hour. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, fluid uh, resuscitation must be conser conservative to avoid volume overload, uh, and especially if the hospital doesn't have mechanical ventilation. Don't use hypotonic uh, crystalloid starches or gelatine for resuscitation. Uh, Vasopressors, uh, it's indicated uh, when shock persists uh, during uh, or after fluid resuscitation. The initial blood pressure target is mean, mean arterial blood pressure more than 65 in adult and age appropriate targets in children. Uh, the vasopressor, which is indicated in adult, is the uh, first line is uh, norepinephrine. And uh, also, we can use epinephrine or vasopressin uh, as added treatment if we cannot achieve the mean arterial pressure. In children with cold shock, uh, the recommended uh, vasopressor is epinephrine, while norepinephrine is used in patients with warm shock. Uh, finally, we should uh, uh, prevent the complications in any uh, admitted patient. We should reduce uh, the days of invasive uh, mechanical ventilation, reduce incidence of uh, ventilator-associated pneumonia by oral intubation uh, or, and semi-recumbent position closed suctioning system, reduce uh, incidence of uh, venous thromboembolism by low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin, or intermittent pneumatic compression devices if there is a contraindication for heparin. We should reduce incidence of uh, catheter-related infection by using uh, aseptic uh, steps for the insertion. We should reduce incidence of uh, pressure sores by uh, turning the patient every two hours. We should reduce the incidence of uh, stress ulcers and uh, GI bleeding by H2 blockers or PPI. We should reduce the incidence of ICU-related weakness by ampulating the patient as soon as possible. Uh, as, we, as we saw that the management of uh, novel coronavirus, there is no specific treatment for the virus so far, no vaccine so far. It's only supportive treatment. Uh, it's similar to any uh, uh, patient with viral pneumonia or severe pneumonia or septic shock or IRDS of any cause. Now we are going to talk about the management of uh, community acquired pneumonia according to American Thoracic Society guidelines uh, 2019 because it's uh, related to our topic for today because as we mentioned before that uh, uh, every patient with the pneumonia or sepsis uh, with suspected or confirmed case with novel coronavirus, we should start uh, antibiotics for him as soon as possible within one hour. Uh, regarding the treatment of community acquired pneumonia, uh, first of all, we should uh, establish the severity of the pneumonia is it uh, mild or moderate or severe according to PSI 
uh, index, pneumonia severity index. If the patient has PSI uh, less than 70, can be treated as outpatient. If the patient has uh, PSI between 70 and uh, 130, he must be admitted in the ward. If uh, PSI more than 130, must be admitted in ICU. The CURVE 65 uh, score is uh, more simple than PSI score, but it's uh, less accurate. Uh, for CURVE 65, C uh, stands for confusion, U for urea more than seven millimole, R respiratory rate more than 30, B blood pressure uh, less than 90 for the systolic and uh, less than 60 for the diastolic, and age more than 65. Every one of these take one point. If the patient has zero or one point, he can be treated as outpatient. If two points can be treated, must be treated as inpatient. If, if between three and five, must be treated in ICU. Now the, you, the choice of uh, antibiotic uh, will be decided according to the uh, place of care. If the patient is healthy outpatient adult without uh, chronic uh, comorbidities or risk factors for uh, antibiotic resistance, he can be treated by amoxicillin or doxycycline or macrolide. If the patient is outpatient with a chronic condition, such as heart failure, or liver failure, or uh, renal failure, uh, or respiratory failure, he, he must be treated as a combination treatment. Uh, for example, uh, amoxicillin with the clavulinic acid, or cephalosporin, and macrolide or doxycycline. We should combine uh, two antibiotics for him. Or we can use uh, respiratory fluoroquinolones as monotherapy for the patient, such as levofloxacin or moxifloxacin or gemifloxacin. If the patient uh, is admitted with non-severe pneumonia, that means uh, he is admitted in the ward without risk factor with, uh, for MRSA or Pseudomonas aeruginosa, uh, we should use combination therapy Petalactam, such as ampicillin, uh, solbactam, or cefotaxime, or ceftriaxone, uh, plus macrolide. Or we can use uh, monotherapy, uh, such as respiratory fluoroquinolones. If the patient has contraindication for macrolide or fluoroquinolones, we can use uh, doxycycline. If the patient is admitted with severe community-acquired pneumonia without risk factors for MRSA or Pseudomonas, means that the patient is admitted in ICU, always we should use combination therapy, betalactam plus macrolide or betalactam plus respiratory fluoroquinolones. If there is a risk factor for MRSA or uh, Pseudomonas, we should use, uh, for MRSA, we can use vancomycin or linozolid. For uh, pseudomonas, we can use piperacillin, tazobactam, or cefibim or ceftazidim, azetrinam, meropenem, or emipenem. This is an old saying uh, for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, about uh, the controlling infection in uh, the countries which has epidemics. He said, peace be upon him, if you heard uh, about any epidemic in any country, don't tra travel to this country. And if you were in this country, don't travel outside. Thank you very much. This is the end of our lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Khalid.